Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to create reusable CSS with mixins. In SAS, a mixin is a group of CSS declarations that can be reused through the style sheet. Newer CSS features take time before they're fully adopted and ready to use in all browsers. As features are added to browser CSS rules, using them may need vendor prefixes. Consider box shadow. So here they've got these uh, vendor prefixes for box shadow. It's vendor prefix. So Moz is uh, probably a Safari thing. MS is probably a Microsoft thing. WebKit, I think, is a Google thing. Um, but they all are prefixes for box shadow. It's a lot of typing to rewrite this rule for all of these elements that have a box shadow or to change each value to test different effects. Mixins are like functions for CSS. Here's how to write one. So here we've got a mixin, a box shadow, and then we've got we're passing in one, two, three, four variables that have a bling uh, prefix, uh, and it's X, Y, blur, and C. And then we pass that. So basically, we're just, it looks like it, we're, we're using a, a JavaScript uh, selector, but it's CSS, uh, SCSS, and then we're passing it into here, and we're passing in the variables. Um, the definition starts with at mixin, followed by a custom name. The parameters X, Y, blur, and C in this example above are optional. Now, any time a box shadow rule is needed, only a single line calling the mixin replaces having to type all the vendor prefixes. A mixin is called with the at include directive. So here, div, and then we're setting at include, and then we're setting the box shadow to this box shadow thing. So we want to write a mixin for the border radius and give it a radius parameter. It should use all the vendor prefixes for the example. Then use the border radius mixin to give the hashtag awesome element a border radius of 15. Cool. So here we've got a border radius. Uh, here's the awesome uh, element. This is the div. Uh, you can see if I w was just to write in here, uh, hello, this would be this would have hello inside of here. So this is the div element, and the background is green. They've set the height and the width to 150, and so that's what is creating this green box. Okay, so most of the time when I'm writing code, this kind of thing is taken care of in the libraries that we use, like Bootstrap has this kind of built into it or something like that. So this is unfamiliar to me. So I'm just going to go through and just address each issue based on the, uh, the test code here. Uh, your, your code should declare a mixin named border radius. Okay, cool. So we're going to go at, I think, at mixin uh, and then border radius, yeah. and then um, border radius. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're creating, it's basically like a function in which we can pass in a bunch of things, mixing border radius. Okay, and we want to pass in a parameter. And then well, there's going to be a collection of, of different um, code to address each issue. So a mixin named border radius, which has a parameter named bling radius. So I'm gonna go bling radius. This is a mixin called border radius with a parameter of radius. And so this is basically like creating a function is the way that I think about it, like a JavaScript function. It should include uh, WebKit, uh, border radius. And this, we want to make it equal to uh, the bling radius um, element. Okay, the WebKit, we want Moz border radius as well. So we could copy and paste it in there and if we wanted to go a little bit quicker. Radius. Um, it looks, oh, now we want the Microsoft version. I'm assuming it's Microsoft. I'm actually not super familiar with this, but. Um, there we go. And MS border radius. And you should include the general border radius rule that uses the radius. Okay, and then finally we've got border radius is equal to radius. Um, cool. <laughs> now, okay, so now that we've set this uh, function rule up, your code should call border radius mixin using the at include keyword and setting it to p uh, 15 pixels. So here we want to go at include and I think we're going to say um, border radius and then inside of the parameters we want to pass 15 pixels in. Cool, and this has created a border radius. Now remember, border radius changes our um, corners, essentially, and I think if we were to go like 100 pixels, 
the border radius would be a circle. And so uh, passing in 15 gives it these rounded edges. And so, yeah, what we're doing is we're calling this function within the div of awesome. Um, I mean, another way you could probably call it, you could, this wouldn't work, this wouldn't be super wise on a, on a large application, but you could go div and uh, add the border radius into here as well. And so then instead of using the class selector to add it in there, you could use, you could apply it to every single div. This is not advisable on a big application, but I think that this would actually pass the tests as well. But uh, this is not as, not as clean. I don't recommend doing it that way. I'm just trying to show you how it works a little bit more. I would put it in here because then the hashtag awesome element would be have this border radius element. And then your overall divs, which you use for many, many different things, uh, would not. And so, um, yeah. So in here, I think about it as if we're setting the function of how the border radius will work. And we're setting it so that it works on a variety of different um, browser types. So... Google Chrome, um, Apple Safari, you know, Brave, um, all the other kind of interesting web browsers, Microsoft ones as well. So we're trying to just set up rules for a lot of different browser types so that if you've got different users coming in, their website still works. And then instead of having to write it all over and over and over again, you can just use this at include, which says we're going to use a function. And then we put in the function and we put in the parameter. And so then we can change the parameter as we want to. Like say we had another div that was like, uh, you know, circle. We could do the same, uh, a similar thing and have it be like a small blue circle. Um, equals uh, circle. So now we've got this small blue circle. I'm actually going to make it a 200. We'll make it bigger. So now we've got that. But what we could do is pass in at include border radius at uh, uh, 100 pixels. And this at include border. ID circle border radius. I'm not sure what I did wrong there. <laughs> Weird. Anyways, if you put, yeah, and so this would make us make a circle, but we're using the same thing, but we don't have to rewrite this code over and over again. That's why this is useful. We don't want to keep writing the same code over and over again. We want to say, okay, we're going to set this border radius thing up so that it's good to handle all the different web browser types. And then as we're going through our application, say we want to adjust the size of these things, then we're good to go. Uh, we would want to add some, a margin on the top here if we were doing this of like 30 pixels and that'll give us some space right here and then we've got our our uh, our circle and uh, the awesome one obviously all this stuff i'm doing is just explaining this in a little bit more depth but as you can see now the circle and the awesome both share this style of um calling the border radius with the different web browser functionality but you don't have to rewrite it over and over and over again and that's why this is useful Anyways, hope you guys found this useful, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Oh, look at that. Did I break it? Okay. Somehow I'm breaking the code doing that. Uh, it might be something to do with the tests. Uh, I was just doing that to show you guys. Uh, thanks for watching, though, and we'll see you in the next lesson.